So I met a man strong in both thinking and feeling. Hey, sorry, my name's Eric. Can I ask you three quick questions? Yeah. Awesome. First, do you prefer to be in the forest or at the beach? In the forest. Okay. Park or mountain? Mountain. Okay. And mountain versus forest? Mountain. Okay. Would it be true that you're more of a goal-oriented person, a judging type? Somebody that's more focused rather than playful or spontaneous? Somebody st steady, stable, dependable? Yeah, that yeah. would be true, yeah. Cool. And would you say that you're a person that's more of a summer type or a winter type? Uh, I don't know. Neither. And autumn. Yeah, autumn, spring. So okay. neither, neither of those. Right. Autumn versus spring. Which one? I don't know. I would say spring. Lately, I prefer spring. Mm. Uh, in the past, maybe I, I, will ha I would have said uh, autumn, but I'm more of a spring person nowadays. Would it be true that you're more of a feeling type? Somebody that makes decisions based on your gut rather than logic? Somebody is more people-oriented, introspective? I think I'm, I'm more rational than, than a feelings person. And I'm, I'm not a social one also. Interesting, okay. And would you say that you're more of an intuitive type? Somebody is more imaginative, daydream a lot, somebody, lots of ideas, maybe struggle to focus or structure yourself? Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah I have trouble finishing things <laughs> and not, not starting them. <laughs> so yeah, maybe, maybe so. Interesting. Would you say you're more of an introvert rather than an extrovert? Yeah, sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. you come off as quite calm and stable. Have you always been like that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Would you also say you're a bit more modest as a person? Somebody that rather than boasting or be confident, you can be a bit, you downplay your skills sometimes. Yeah. 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 Would you say that you're good at maths? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say so, yeah. What do you do? I'm well. I'm a programmer, but I am also kind of an artist. Oh. I studied fine arts. I I work in a design studio. That's also an artistic collective. So it's kind of hard to describe. That is interesting because that suggests that you're a bit of a mix between the left brain and the right brain because you have the artistic abilities, but you're also a programmer. Yeah. So uh, what got you? What did you get interested in first? So I I I got interest first in art. So I, I wanted to be, yeah, an artist in my tens, early teens. And then I decided I wanted to be a graphic designer because that maybe was had better perspectives. And then I started to start, uh, studying graphic design. I kind of didn't feel like continuing and I, I went to fine arts. But I was also interested in 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 web design specifically, yeah. and then I got into programming and digital arts, and I started doing some work through coding. Huh. So, yeah. So, what kind of coding do you do? I I I mostly do web. So I I do web like both back end and front end. So mm -hmm. I I do programming for for websites, and a bit of scripting for AI related things right and okay would you say you have good attention to detail then as a designer yeah yeah and do you enjoy that what do you enjoy most about design like what drew you into that yeah maybe i i enjoy the process of of coming up with something and then building it and refining it yeah but it's mostly the process of realizing something you've you've come up with and you think of yeah okay so for you it's about the creative process that you yeah. that that's what really yeah. gets you engaged yeah. okay so based on all of this it sounds like you're an intuitive above all so you're a bit of a mix between a feeling and a thinking type because you have the logical traits uh, of knowing how it works and the skills around mm -hmm. it but you also seem to have a small passion for the design aspects of the more visual and aesthetic aspects of it yeah. But it seems like most of all, it's the creativity that drives you, the mm -hmm. desire for novelty, change, variety. Would you yeah. say that's right? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds that sound accurate enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Would you also say you're a very open minded and broad minded person? Lots of ideas, yeah. struggle to focus, maybe? Yeah. 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 I, I don't know if it's a struggle to focus. So 
it's n it's easy for me to focus on doing doing something, so I can concentrate easily on things. Mm. It's it's more a struggle to focus in more in a in a general sense. So in, in the long term, not in the short term. <laughs> Yeah, because during your day-to-day -day you can get really engaged with something, yeah. but in the long term you can change as you go. And yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So what would you say is more, would you say that you have more introverted intuition then? That's, for example, when you're more theoretical about things, like, or would you say you have a theoretical interest in what you do? Like, do yeah. you study the design principles of graphic design and how to build yeah. things a lot? Yeah, I, I have a ten also a tendency to, to get a lot of, knowledge and to try to understand a lot of things and sometimes I never get into the practical side of it oh. so sometimes I, I feel the need to, to know too many, too many details before starting doing the, the thing no, I'm, before going into the practical part of it that makes sense that, that, I, I do enjoy a lot the practical side of things, but sometimes the need for knowledge uh, kind of holds me back a bit. Right, because you're more engaged or under interested in the understanding and the getting knowledge about yeah. something and less in applying it, right? Intuitives often can find it hard to get started on projects because yeah. they enjoy reading and learning all about it. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to, you know, going out and doing it, it can be a bit, yeah, <laughs> less engaging or less fun. Yeah, it, it's not so... I. I look forward to to start things practically, but I get, I I get caught up in in the in the theory wormhole, mm. <laughs> and and maybe I need to know things like with a very detail in order to feel comfortable doing them. Yeah, and and yeah, so sometimes. I spend too much time learning and less than I would like doing. But it must also give you access to very original ideas and perspectives on things. You must be a person that has, well, comes up with very creative ideas sometimes. I don't know, I hope so. <laughs> would you also say that you're a person that can be a bit too modest sometimes in the sense that you might doubt yourself a bit, even if you have the right answer, you might feel like, oh, I need to study it a bit longer, or I need yeah. to... Yeah. yeah, maybe so, yeah. Yeah, maybe a bit. Uh, you get a bit philosophical about it, so mm -hmm. like you spend a lot of time in like thinking maybe this, but what if that, but then what if this would be better, like that you get into that. Yeah. Right, okay, that's really interesting. Uh, what do you say is your biggest passion now? Like what do you feel the best when you do? So it's hard, it's hard to say for me because I have a lot of different interests. Mm. So always to to pick a single option because I like I like the the work I do. I like some projects we are doing with my collective with AI, but I I'm also into music. Um, I would like to to do something music related, but I maybe don't have too much time for it. Mm. And also I like. Anything that's manual, that's drawing, painting, and any kind of craft, I, I very much like to do it. But I can choose a single passion. Maybe that that that's been the problem many times. Maybe because mm. I can choose a single thing, and I want to do some. I always want to do a lot of things, but I don't have time for for all of them. Yeah. So I do a bit of this, a bit of that. Yeah. So you mentioned that you are part of a collective working on AI, basically. Yeah. So what kind of things with AI are you, fascinate you? Well, um, so when working with AI, so every time AI is, is kind of more capable of mimicking human results. And that's not what interest, uh, and that's not our interest in, in the collective I'm with. It's the, the surprising thing with AI, the maybe not so kind of the error it's not exactly an error but but it can be kind of evoking when when an ai tool kind of does things in a in a different way that the person would no something that maybe the industry will consider to be an error on something that's not accurate but it can be kind of poetic it can be evoking it can be something so interesting in a in a creative or in an artistical way yeah 
you seem very much to think like an artist in how you approach this. There is this concept in Japanese uh, called wabi-sabi, yeah. you know, the perfection and imperfection, mm -hmm. you know, how they fill up broken glass yeah. or a vase with a piece of gold. Yeah. It seems like for you then the interest here was what AI does wrong mm -hmm. and how that what they do wrong can be something fascinating. Why did they make that mistake? And uh, yeah, but uh, is there even a beauty or something cool about that? Is there? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Mm. It's kind of for one part is is what AI can do differently, no? And in the other side, it's that when we there's something that the AI does in a not perfect way, it kind of makes you think about how do how how you relate to to art, mm. because in being not perfect, also it makes it more human in a not human way mm. so you can find interest in there because it's not perfect so you kind of start projecting feelings and metaphors and meanings into things that are just an, an automated process yeah so the more you speak, the more I think that maybe you're more of a perceiving type than a judging type. Mm -hmm. So typically the perceiving types, I would say you're in between on the boat, yeah. but that you're slightly more perceiving. Mm -hmm. Perceiving types are more playful, more spontaneous, mm -hmm. more go with the flow. And they seem to be more about precision, a bit more careful to make mistakes and to make sure that they do things right. And they seem to be more collaborative. So yeah, you seem to also enjoy the collaborating with the collective and making sure that you work with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh. Thank you so much for answering these questions, by the way. What's your name? My name is Mark. Cool. That's really nice to meet you. And have a nice day. Right. So that was fascinating. Okay. So this guy, he said that he related more to being a logical person. Uh, he said he was a programmer and he definitely had an interest in mathematics. But at the same time, he thought like an artist. And he even said he got into art before he got into programming. So it seems like to him, almost this is something that he picked up later on in life. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching.